Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here at the George School. Uh, now, I'm paraphrasing, but I was told that innovators and insane people uh, are similar, have a lot in common. And that's because they both see things that don't exist. So, of course, in the case of, uh, in the case of innovators, it's assumed that those delusions obviously will someday become reality. But um, <clears throat> this gives me a reason to talk a little bit about I innovation and, um, and how important it is, because obviously, I, it goes without saying, innovation is critical to civilization. Civilization depends on it. Without, um, without innovation, obviously, progress would be slow and random, infrequent, maybe even improbable. So this is a, a probably profound question that, that we ask ourselves. Can you actually cultivate innovation? Can you farm it like you would a crop? Can you um, create an environment that's nurturing so that ideas will actually grow? Well, uh, the story I want to tell you about today is the story of the Pennsylvania Biotechnology Center, which we believe is something of an innovation farm. And the story of the creation of the Pennsylvania Biotech Center, which is a business incubator, nonprofit business incubator, is in itself a, a pretty innovative story. This, this center, which is in Bucks County, was created by the Hepatitis B Foundation, which my wife and I and another couple from Pennsylvania started about 26 years ago. Uh, but this biotech center was created just 10 years ago. It was an old factory that was falling apart and falling down, and, and, and I'll tell you about how we put ourselves in the middle of it, this nonprofit foundation, and, and in a way that our ideas were intended to bubble out and create new, I, new jobs, new companies, and drugs that are now uh, m used medically to help people. So this is a story of the biotech center. It's the story of the Hepatitis B Foundation. And it's also uh, the story of, of a way forward for innovation. But let me first start and tell you a little bit about why we started the Hepatitis B Foundation and what Hepatitis B is. So um, as you can see from my tie here, this, this picture here is an electron micrograph of the hepatitis B virus. And it's actually, I think, pretty attractive uh, and makes a nice piece of, makes a nice piece of fashion. <clears throat> but um, but uh, this is a photograph. It's called an electron micrograph because hepatitis B is so small, you can only see it with an electron microscope. But um, of course, I think it's a, a kind of an elegant virus and an elegant thing to see. And it's modeled here by John Culp from our center, the research institute that we run, the Blumberg Institute. But what hepatitis B does is not beautiful. Um, what it does is it infects the liver, uh, healthy liver shown there, and after decades of, of damage to the liver, uh, damage to the liver eventually causes cirrhosis, that's liver hardening, and then often cancer. That happens in about 10 to 15 percent of the people who have the virus in, and, in them and can't get rid of it. My wife and I uh, encountered a family that was in need. Their child had hepatitis B, and we wanted to help them. 26 years ago, those were the dark ages of hepatitis B. But you could vaccinate people against the virus and protect them from infection. And that's because of the work of Baruch Blumberg, Barry Blumberg, as we came to know him. He won the Nobel Prize for discovery of hepatitis B. I'm showing a, a seminal paper here here uh, on this slide, and we went to Dr. Blumberg, who did his Nobel Prize winning work at the National Institutes of Health and Fox Chase, and asked him to help us. Because sure, if you um, didn't have hepatitis B, you could be protected. And today, uh, there's universal vaccination for people uh, uh, in the United States against hepatitis B, thanks to Dr. Blumberg and the work of others, obviously. But if you had the virus in you, you couldn't get it out. And in fact, this was a big problem, remains a big problem, as illustrated on this map of the world in the orange areas shows you where hepatitis B is. There are more than 300 million people who have the virus in their bodies, they can't get it out. They didn't get the vaccine or the vaccine didn't work. But look at where most of those people are, colored in the, in the orange and in the reddish areas. They're in Asia and they're in Africa. And 26 years ago, this of course was even more of an undeveloped area of the world. And there wasn't much interest 
in the United States, that nice green area, uh, in helping people with hepatitis B if you had it. Interest in the vaccine, but not if you had it. So we asked Dr. Blumberg to help us start this foundation to cure people of, of, um, of hepatitis B, to look for drugs to treat people with hepatitis B. Remember, it causes liver cancer. And most people who have hepatitis B in the world got it at birth from their moms who were infected. And he did. He, he offered to help us. And we created this uh, little nonprofit foundation called Hepatitis B Foundation. Of course, our goal was very ambitious. We wanted to cure people of hepatitis B, and we wanted to um, uh, do that by bringing scientists uh, together under one roof to work on a cure. Uh, pretty unlikely, and at that time, I was just beginning at Jefferson Medical School. My wife was, uh, was a nurse, uh, just beginning as a nurse, and we didn't have much money. Even Dr. Blumberg didn't have much money. Even he had spent his Nobel Prize money, no. He, <laughs> <laughs> no. Even Dr. Blumberg didn't have enough money to help us. So uh, we were modeling ourselves after some, you know, the Manhattan Project or, the, or the, uh, where they came together to build a bomb, or more charitably, the, uh, the moonshot. And that was going to be too hard to do. So, but the, we hatched the idea, though, with, and this is, the, this is one of the um, steps in nurturing innovation, that if we're going to be so good with our thinking about spinning out ideas that will result in medicines for people with hepatitis B and liver cancer, uh, we're going to have something of commercial value. Why don't, we, um, why don't we build a biotechnology business incubator? And we found this old factory in, um, in, in outside of Doylestown, Pennsylvania, uh, 110,000 square feet was, was empty space. 146 people had, lo were, had lost their jobs. That was kind of sad. Place was in deterioration. We would buy it, put ourselves in the middle with our scientists, create a research institute we now call the Blumberg Institute, and we'd sit there and we'd spin out ideas in little companies, and then maybe other professors uh, from other universities who have ideas would come and spend time with us on their sabbaticals or taking leaves to, to spin out their ideas. And what happened was, this 10 years ago, uh, people from pharma came to set up companies, people from other universities came, and, and 10 years later, actually nine years later, we commissioned an economic impact study uh, which found uh, uh, really uh, uh, some remarkable accomplishments of this center. The center has had more than $1.8 billion of beneficial impact on the, on the region. Uh, we went from um, uh, very few jobs, actually there were only 17 of us when we got there, to now more than 350. We're about to build a fourth building to accommodate 19 more labs. There'll be another 100 people there, hopefully in about two years. And, and of course, um, it's not just numbers, but the companies that have spun out of our place. Uh, of course, the Hepatitis B Foundation and the Blumberg Institute, our research organization, are there. But there are 35 to 38 small companies there right now, and more than 60 have, have spun out of our place. And some of these companies are uh, really worth mentioning. Uh, one of them, Synergy Pharmaceutics, is worth more than $1.4 billion. It's publicly traded. It's drugs about to be approved, called Placonotide. Novira, a company dedicated to hepatitis B discovery, was just acquired by Johnson & Johnson. Uh, we have companies bought out of the place for more than five, six hundred million dollars. So it really has been a remarkable little uh, creator farm for, for new ideas. But not just look at the companies that have been created, but the people that work at our center are also very inspiring to me. We have some of the finest, most accomplished drug discovery experts in the world at our place. Uh, I, I, we have what we call our wall of fame, and there are six individuals shown here. We're going to add two more by the end of the year, or, or certainly by January. These are the individuals whose medicines have been approved for use by the US FDA. That is a real milestone. I mean, you w would be hard pressed to find another institution, certainly a nonprofit, with so many uh, laureates like this at its institution. Most notably this year um, is, is Mike Sophia in the center, Whose, whose drug is a cure for hepatitis C. Yes, hepatitis C is now curable, not B. Hepatitis C is curable uh, in part because of the drug Sofospavir or Sovaldi invented by Mike Sophia and his colleagues. He's at our center working on a cure for hepatitis B, having spun out another company with our technologies called uh, initially Encore, now Arbutus. But um, 
Pat Lamb is there, the inventor of uh, Apixaban. Bruce Dorsey is there, the inventor of Crixavan. Bruce Marinoff, the inventor of Topiramate, and soon, uh, uh, soon we'll have Mingao up there, the inventor of Decladosphere, and Shalu, uh, Kanor Shalabai, the inventor of Placonotide. So we have, um, we have really uh, 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 put together a remarkable group of people. And now, of course, the Hepatitis B Foundation and its colleagues have spun out. Uh, well, I mentioned there are 38 companies at the center, but we have spun out uh, a number of, uh, of, of drugs. Two of our drugs from, from our laboratories are now in clinical trials. Some of our medical devices are now in use. Uh, and of course, uh, and our detection markers of cancer are in use. We're living the legacy of Dr. Blumberg, who's shown here. He passed away three years ago, and we changed the name of our institute in his honor. He's shown here meeting with some of our students and young faculty. And one of Dr. Blumberg's missions was also training in academics. And of course, we have um, a very active uh, college and high school program. Here are some of the summer college kids uh, embracing a, ma a liver mascot when we go out, uh, or the foundation goes out and promotes uh, vaccination and screenings for whether or not you have hepatitis B. So the foundation is now uh, certainly uh, one, of the, one of the leading portals of entry for information about hepatitis B in the country. The center is home to the high, largest concentration of hepatitis B in liver cancer scientists at a nonprofit. So I, I, I think definitely this was a way to help our foundation, but it also shows, I think, pretty clearly that we can nurture and cultivate innovation in actually a very deliberate way, in, in a knowledge community, in a stimulating intellectual community. Similar to the one you have here. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.